<laughs> Here's a Turing machine. We can draw it. We're drawing it, and sometimes I think drawing is more confusing than just listing the transitions. So this is the way that we're drawing it, where this is our delta function. We've shown the delta function. If you remember the definition, this is our delta function. The delta function takes a state and a symbol and outputs a triple. So if we draw that, we're going to draw the states, and we're going to use the edges to show the other things. That's what this means. So this is the two inputs. That's this transition rule, where this is the read symbol, this is the write, this is the direction, and this is the next state. So I have a simple four-state machine. So you should be able to execute that. So I'll give you a little while to figure out what this machine does. There's no input. It starts with a completely blank tape. So you should be able to execute this. And you can work with people nearby you to figure out what this does. If anyone gets the exact answer, within the time I have, I have a special prize for you. There's a good reason like humans should not simulate machines. Good that I understand what it would mean to simulate it, but we should have machines that can simulate machines. We have a Turing machine simulator. So here's the program. This simulator also starts in state zero. I've labeled the states A, B, C, D. So there's four states, but to make things simpler, there's a state zero that does that transition. This is encoding the same rule. The underscore is the blank, and the one is the one. Those are the two symbols we're going to use. We're not going to use zero. Zero is too easily confused between zero and blank. So this is the rule. It says if you're in state A and you read a blank, you should write a one. You should move the tape head, move I to write. That means increase by one and go to state B. Unless I made a mistake, encodes the same machine. So now we can take advantage of having computers to run it. We're in state A. We wrote our one and we moved right. And now we go again. And we, I don't know how, how far did anyone get simulating it in your head or on paper? So we've gone now, how many state steps? We've gone 17 steps. Any idea what it's going to do now? Do we think it's going to run forever? It's pretty hard to tell. That's something we'll get into more soon. But we can let it run, and it runs for 108 steps and stops. So this is actually a, a special Turing machine. If you only have four states and two symbols, the longest you can make a machine that runs for and still eventually stops is 108 steps. This is known that you can't have a four-state machine with two symbols that runs for more than 108 steps. If it runs for more than 108 steps, it means it's going to run forever. Okay. So what if we had another state? How long do we think it's going to run for? Should we try it? We have a, a five-state machine. And we will start that one running. Okay, so this one's running a little faster. So we only have one more state, still two symbols. So I started this one running in my office last week. It's still running. This is how far it got in my office. It got up to about two and a half million. It will actually stop after 47 million steps. And this is what's the best known five-state machine. Best meaning runs for the most steps. Whether that's best depends on what your hobbies are. But it runs for 47 million some steps and eventually does stop. The BB stands for busy beaver. But it's not known if this is the best. There might be a better five-state machine. We know one that runs for 47 million steps, which is this one, which is having fun, going up to 40,000 now. We'll not finish before the end of the class. Yeah. The definition of, of the busy beaver problem is that it runs for some number of steps and does stop at the end. It's the Turing machine that runs for the most steps and eventually stops. For any number of states, there's some machine that satisfies that, that's going to run for some number of steps. What's interesting about it, the numbers get so astronomically huge. Five states, we're only up to 40-some million. Once you get up to six states, you're up to like 10 to the 10 to the 10 to the 10 to the 10, to the 10, to the 10 to like the hugest numbers you can think of. And, and there's a nice blog post about how huge these numbers get. 
the largest numbers you can imagine is what you get by adding a few more states here. Uh, but they're still finite. And, and the way it's defined, it, it has to be finite. <laughs>